Have you ever wondered how you can concentrate your attention on the voice of a single person in the middle of a crowd of people, all speaking at the same time? It's not easy. The other, distracting voices are very similar sounding, and often they're just as loud as the person you actually want to hear. If you want, you can switch your attention to eavesdropping on the conversation behind you, even without making any overt movements, like turning your head. In 1953, Colin Cherry named this the cocktail party problem, and we've been wondering about it ever since. Even sophisticated devices, like the voice recognition technology in your mobile phone, have trouble with this problem. So the question is, what is your brain doing when you perform this task so effortlessly? My name is Chris Rogers. At UC Berkeley, Mike DeWeese and I wondered how individual neurons in the cerebral cortex work together to select a sound from a mixture. So we turned to an animal model, the rat, because many advanced recording techniques are feasible in rats, but not yet in humans. Of course, rats can't understand English, so we had to simplify the problem for them by using artificial sounds instead of human voices. On each trial, the rat heard a mixture of two simultaneous sounds, one noise burst and one tone, but it had to respond only to one of the sounds. For instance, on one trial, the rat would have to respond to the noise burst, and on a later trial, the rat would have to select the tone, now ignoring the noise burst. We were able to cue the rats to alternate between which sound they selected many times within each session. Next, we recorded from individual neurons in primary auditory cortex, or A1, located approximately here on the rat's brain. Based on previous results from other labs, we expected to find that the neurons would change their tuning, responding more strongly to the important sound and less to the ignored sound in the mixture. In fact, we found something very different. Neurons started firing more even before we played the mixture of sounds, depending on which of the two sounds the rat was about to select. Here's an example. This is a plot of the activity of a single neuron in A1. The mixture of sounds begins at the time indicated by the vertical line. During the shaded time period on the left, the rat is about to select a sound from the mixture, but he hasn't heard it yet. You can see that the firing rate is much higher when the rat is about to select the tone, the red trace, compared with when the rat is about to select the noise burst, the blue trace. Then the sound comes on, and the neuron's response is still elevated while selecting the tone, suggesting that this change of baseline activity leads to an equivalent change in stimulus-driven activity. We found a similar anticipatory effect in the neurons of medial prefrontal cortex, or MPFC. This region is traditionally considered a high-level decision-making center, whereas auditory cortex is traditionally considered a low-level sound processing region. Surprisingly, we found that these two brain regions actually behaved quite similarly to each other, suggesting that the process of stimulus selection is distributed throughout the brain, rather than being localized to one particular region. Finally, we designed a computer simulation of theoretical auditory neurons in a network. These neurons project to a downstream region, possibly the striatum, to convert representations of sound stimuli into the required motor actions. All of the neurons have random tuning for the sounds but we train the output projections of half of them to respond to noise bursts, and the other half to respond to tones. Our data suggest that similar populations of neurons exist in MPFC, and we think they might be the source of the effects we observed in A1. Now, just by adding in some anticipatory activation to the population for selecting noise bursts, the network's overall choice is biased towards selecting those sounds. Of course, we can also activate the other population, and now the network selects tones. Essentially, the network can select either sound simply by activating the right population of neurons without requiring any special tuning properties in those neurons. Although our task is similar in some ways to the cocktail party problem, it's certainly a simplification. For one thing, our rats always heard familiar sounds, but the human brain is capable of tracking a voice that it's never heard before. So more work is needed to fully understand this complex ability but we hope that our results have shown that rats have a lot to teach us about the brain's ability to identify and respond to important stimuli in its environment.